Man in paper mask is watching us. We don't live in the best neighborhood, but we don't have too many bizarre encounters here. That changed as we were walking by a house one day and someone emerged wearing a paper bag on their head. My husband thinks it was just a kid, but I'm not so sure. This person watched us from the darkness and seemed to follow us for at least a block. I have no idea what he wanted. Then again, maybe it just hasn't been long enough to know for sure. So this only happened yesterday, and it's been driving me crazy. It's not as wild as other stories on here, but it's by far one of the creepiest things that's ever happened to me. So my husband and I are walking home from having a beer at the local pub around 6pm. In terms of setting the scene, we live in a small New Zealand town with a population around 2,000. It's a real mixed bag in terms of residents. Older folk, crystal smokers, low income, but commuters from our capital city have been increasingly settling here. We fall into the latter category. It's spring here, so it was still plenty light, and we were just chatting as we walked the 10 minutes or so home. About three minutes into the walk, at the first intersection we came across, I spot a cat sitting on the fence of one of the corner houses on the other side of the street from us. I say meow, and it meows back. It then starts stalking a bird, so my husband and I continue watching this house as we walk past. We were watching the cat, really. Suddenly, a person with a brown paper bag mask on their head kind of stumbles out of the front door of this house, into the yard. Their mannerisms and how they're moving are so strange, but not what I'd associate with being drunk. The house itself seems completely lifeless, so we know there's no party on or anything. The person then turns to us and makes eye contact. Well, the eye holes in the mask are staring at us at least, and they slowly start backing away to the front door alcove of the house and disappear from view into the alcove. We've been slowly walking this whole time, and at this point, I have literal goosebumps and an intense sense of dread. When I write it down, it sounds so silly, but there was something so creepy about this person. We are still looking as we walk past the house, and the paper bag face slowly emerges from the alcove, watching us before disappearing from view again. As we walk and get further and further away, we keep turning around to look, and the same thing happens over and over again. At first, nothing. And then, slowly but surely, the paper bag face emerges out to watch us. This continued until we were at the end of the street, some 350 meters from where we started. It didn't stop until we rounded the corner out of sight. It still makes my skin crawl just thinking about it. My husband laughed and said it was probably some kid getting ready for Halloween or just messing with us. And he's probably right, but I had to keep turning around to watch my back the rest of the walk home because I was so creeped out. This original poster says her story isn't that wild, but it sounds plenty crazy to me. Actually, this sounds vaguely like those clown sightings from several years back, just without the Pennywise makeup. Those clowns never hurt anyone, but there was still something vaguely sinister about their appearances. Why were they appearing just to stare at people? What kind of person dedicates their free time to simply making people feel nervous and creeped out? Even if this paper bag guy wasn't dangerous, there's something about the general sound of him that just isn't right. Also, just because OP didn't see him after the first block doesn't mean he was nowhere around. That's the creepiest thing about being watched. Once you know someone's done it to you once, you never really know that they've stopped. That general sense of unease makes this easily one of the creepiest true stories we've read since October began. My friends and I were almost beaten and left in a ditch. Back when I was around 17 or 18, I would go out to parties with my friend at night. It was my best friend at the time, Ivan, and his cousin Caesar that would invite me out that fateful night. I had been talking to a friend of Ivan's on Facebook about meeting each other, and since I really hadn't had much experience with girls, I thought it was now or never. 
This girl had a birthday party that day and invited us all to join her. So I took a bath, got ready, and my friends pulled up for me in a small car called a Hyundai Etas, which was really popular in Mexico in the early 2000s. Since it was small, it was really good at saving gas and not too expensive, so it was the perfect car for a college student. I said bye to my mom and got in. We went to buy beer for the night and a pack of smokes for everyone. Back then, I would smoke a lot. I still cringe about it, but I suppose it was a college thing. My friend told us that he had been in contact with this girl on Facebook and that she accepted his invite to come to the party with him tonight. We were all impressed and happy for him. We pulled up to her house and stopped near a park to wait for her. I remember a group of thugs walking around the park, but since they seemed to be our age, we weren't too bummed out. My friend called her to come out, and my friend Caesar stepped out for a smoke. I was sitting in the back, not wanting to come out because of these guys outside. They seemed to be asking for trouble, because they began to argue about something really dumb with Caesar. So my friend Ivan told me to step out, just to have his back in case anything went down. I'm not particularly strong, but I am almost six feet tall, and with a winter coat, I tried my best to appear tough enough for them to think twice. I lit a cigarette and pretended to be a tough mother lover. I looked at a guy and laughed. Somehow it worked, and they left. We went to the party and had a great time. I made out all night with the girl I'd been talking to. Later, I found out she had kissed pretty much every dude that was there before me. Nevertheless, I was still grateful for the opportunity and said goodbye with a long kiss. As we headed back to the house where my friend's date lived, she seemed very quiet. I knew they had hit it off during the party, but she now looked stiff and even scared. My buddy and I were riding in the back to let them have the front to themselves, but she was just nervously looking at her phone. When we arrived, she wanted to get out. My friend, trying to score points, said, Wait, I'll walk you in. She did not like this, and said for us to just go. We were a bit buzzed in the back and wanted to have a smoke, so we all stepped outside and watched them go to her door. I remember laughing about something with my friend, when the mood suddenly became so dark. She started screaming, Go now! Get out of here! A car pulled out nearly in front of us, and people with bats and blunt instruments got out so fast that I barely remember how I got back into the back seat. The girl said something along the lines of, Leave them alone, and held him while a bunch of dudes got out. My friend Ivan got into the driver's seat and started the car. Thankfully, it started right up without trouble. But a big bottle of liquor then hit the windshields, cracking the top corner. I saw some guys come from the right side of the car where we were standing, and I quickly went to the other side to give my friend an easy way into the back right seat. As I turned the corner, I saw this massive-looking guy come up to me and barely had time to close the door. As I pulled the lock down, this dude was punching my window. My other friend wasn't so lucky, since he actually got hit in the head and had barely made it in the car. He couldn't even close the door because one guy was grabbing his leg. All of this happened in the span of six seconds, so it's kind of fuzzy and jumbled. I acted completely out of instinct. Thankfully, we all got in, and my friends stepped on the gas while zigzagging in case they would shoot at us. We all were scared witless and wondered what had happened. As we got back to our neighborhood, my friends were fuming. Both of them knew their way around a fight and could hold their own. I, on the other hand, am turning 30 next year and still have never been in a fight. Thankfully, I still had some cash left and told them we should go buy some illegal beer at midnight. I tried my best to calm them down and convince them not to go back. My friend Caesar had actually woken a dude up in the middle of the night with a phone call, and the man was ready to show up and throw down. After a few beers and a lot of talking, I convinced them it wasn't worth it and to just let the night end. I eventually got home, my parents never found out, and just fell asleep. A few days later, my friend Ivan called me and told me that the girl's ex-boyfriend was actually a lead gang member of a gang known for beating the heck out of people and dropping them in water canals around the city. My heart dropped out of my chest. We had been seconds away from getting beat down and maybe taken out completely by a bunch of thugs, all for a stupid date. If it wasn't for our quick reaction, her backing them up a bit, and something outside this realm that wanted us to get away, we might not have made it. To this day, I still stay awake at night thinking of how fast and out of nowhere situations like this can present themselves in your life. 
How many times have we avoided critical danger? All I can say is to trust your gut and your instincts. In the end, it all happens so fast that your wits are all you have. This OP leaves us with a pretty decent moral, although it's worth noting that your wits aren't technically the only thing you have. Sadly, we live in a world where understanding self-defense and situational awareness can be vital. It's better to know these things and never need them than to wind up needing them yet find yourself left defenseless. And while this may not be a true horror story, two very terrifying thoughts underscore this entire tale. First, as OP says, you just never know when something like this might happen. They had no idea what kind of connections that friend's date had, nor is there any reason for them to have known. And unfortunately, that doesn't always matter. People are targeted at random every day. There are some very disturbed people out there who simply enjoy having power over others. If we aren't prepared for them, it's all too possible for them to take that power. The second terrifying thing is how many guys would have made the same decision as OP after finding out his date had been passed around all night. There was no reason to continue kissing her at that point. Unless he was wearing those rubber lips that Robin uses to kiss Poison Ivy in Schumacher's beloved Batman films, he was taking his life into his hands with that decision. Not the way to live, buddy. Want more for yourself. If you made it this far in the video, consider liking and subscribing for more videos coming. I was held at gunpoint as a child. This happened when I was 12 or 13. Back then, in the late 80s, there was a curfew for anyone underage. I don't know if that still exists, but it matters for the story. Me and my BFF, both girls, would walk the neighborhood at night. She would spend the night at my house a lot. I also stayed a lot at hers. It worked like this and vice versa most weekends. We would crawl through my bedroom window and walk around and visit our middle school friends or just go to the park or whatever. We were well aware of the curfew and would run and hide from headlights as we didn't want to get caught. One night we were doing our thing when we saw some headlights and ran under a carport. The car pulls into the driveway we're hiding in. A guy gets out and starts yelling, You trying to rob me? So we ran. My friend runs one way while I run the other. Then I hear her scream. I look back and see that she's caught. She has her hands up. I realize that I can't leave her there by herself. So I walk over with my hands up, saying, It's okay, we're just kids. Then I see the man has a gun. He's pointing the gun at her, and she's hyperventilating. I walk up, trying to explain that we aren't trying to do anything crazy, and we're just running from possible cops. He then points the gun at me. He's saying something about us trying to rob him. I'm like, no, dude, we were hiding from possible cops because of curfew. He made us pull our shirts up, supposedly to show that we had no weapons. But we were 13 years old, so thinking back, he might have just been a perv. He let us leave after that. This was 30 years ago. I often wonder what would have happened if I just kept running. I also wonder what would have happened if I or my friend had told an adult about it. I mean, it was a few streets from my house. He might have been identified. Or maybe, ultimately, we were the bad guys. No, this OP and her friend were definitely not the bad guys. There's a lot of speculation in the comments about this guy's motivation for having them lift their shirts. It sounds pretty sleazy, although some people suggest he might have just been ultra-paranoid and prone to some severe mental health issues. One person does point out that, in the dark of night, he probably didn't know they were kids when he first pulled the gun. He just saw two people diving into the carport and assumed the worst. But once he saw they were kids, there was no reason to keep training a weapon on them. And some responsible gun owners point out that if they had been thieves, he would have been potentially escalating the situation without knowing yet if they were armed themselves. So even if you try to make excuses for his initial behavior, the fact is that he wasn't even keeping himself safe. He was merely traumatizing two very young girls when it did nobody any favors, including himself. People really shouldn't own weapons without understanding this sort of logic. Hurting myself put me at even greater risk. I should warn you that this story involves self-harm. I was 17 and deeply depressed back then. After a particularly rotten day, I decided to walk home across the fields to try and clear my head. There was a strong wind going over the fields, and my floor-length hippie skirt fluttered around me like open sails. This skirt will be important later. 
Back then, I always carried an emergency razor blade in my purse. So I sat down and self-medicated. I was so desperate for relief that only after I was done and my arm was pretty sliced up did I notice that I did not have anything to wipe or wrap my arm, except the clothes on my body, which I did not want to smear with blood. Well, darn. I tried to wash it off with some water, but it only made the blood run a brighter red. Great. Well, whatever. It's only a short walk, and there's nobody in sight. So I went on, being mindful to hold my arm turned inward in an attempt to hide any wounds. I obviously failed because, just a few hundred meters before getting into town, I passed a small private property marked by high spiked fences and hedges. Just as I walked past, a car drove up behind me and a skinhead-looking guy jumped out of the car and started screaming at me. He asked what the heck I was doing on his property. He was absolutely furious. I was completely startled. Nothing, I said. I don't know what you're talking about. He barked at me that I had clearly cut my arm up on his barbed fence trying to get in. He said I'd better keep away, or next time there would be grave consequences. He was so much bigger than me, and we were alone as far as I could see. I hadn't even been on his property. I was sobbing at this point. I asked, what would I even want there? I think I noticed a flicker of confusion in his eyes as I pleaded my innocence. But he had obviously made up his mind about me and just kept on barking at me until he finally got back in his car and drove off. I was left standing there, clearly distraught. A petite girl, even more broken than before after being screamed at by a strange grown man and left with a bloody arm dripping down onto the dirt. With my beautiful, long, flowing skirt blowing in the wind, it would have been absolutely impossible to climb any spiked fence without tearing that skirt to pieces. I hope he thought about that fact later. It actually sounds like this guy hadn't made up his mind about OP. Rather, he probably realized that she had a point, but also knew he'd look terrible if he admitted it at that point. It's despicable how many people would rather continue sinking their claws into another person rather than admit the mere possibility that they could be wrong. Besides, she was wounded. If he really had suspicions, he could have called for help. Police likely would have shown up as well, and he could report his suspicions then. That way he'd do right by her, and they could ease his concerns by investigating and finding no evidence she had climbed his fence. This story was actually a comment left under the previous one, and they both illustrate a frightening truth. In both cases, the men threatening these teenage girls might not have had malicious intentions, but in both cases, these men didn't really think through their actions. Stupidity is dangerous, and there's enough of it out there to make the world a truly terrifying place. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.